Hello, this is Scott Pacino, editor of telecoms.com, and I'm talking to Irving Guy, VP of Product Management at Qualcomm. So, Irving, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about some of the frustrations that domestic Wi-Fi users um, have to go through these days? I think uh, there's a few. Uh, one definitely is, is the coverage good all over the home, or is it good just where the gateway or the router is? Uh, that's a big one that we hear. Uh, another one is that it's not very easy to bring in new devices on your home network uh, when you bring it in. Uh, and the third might be just from a, a device standpoint, what is the security associated with it uh, in terms of could someone hack the new camera that you just introduced into your home network? Uh, these are the types that uh, I hear a lot when I'm talking to folks. Okay, and do you have, um, do you have an idea of, of a more sort of ideal sort of domestic connectivity situation and what can be done to sort of achieve that? Yeah, one of the big trends that we're seeing uh, from a Qualcomm standpoint is the move to mesh networking. Uh, and that attains a few different things within that umbrella. One, of course, is that just uh, having one gateway in one uh, cupboard of the home is not enough. And uh, the mesh nodes with two or three nodes that can be added on to that main gateway do create a network that is more resilient uh, across the home, at the edges of the home, in the corners of the home and the nodes can be placed uh, in different levels uh, uh, of the home as well, which helps. And uh, many of these mesh nodes based on Qualcomm come with uh, functionality like uh, self-provisioning or self-healing uh, from a security standpoint as well, uh, which does for the most uh, uh, everyday consumer uh, take care of uh, their concerns on security. For example, we just announced uh, that we'll be supporting WPA3 both on our gateway devices as well as on our mobile devices starting this summer. Uh, that goes a long way in terms of security coverage. And the ability to provision devices uh, is very, very key. So you don't have to go around looking for SSIDs uh, as you bring a new device into a trusted home. Okay, and, and what about from the um, communication service provider's point of view, presumably they have some stake in, in this experience being as pleasant as possible for the end user as possible? Yes, I mean, if you take a look at uh, most of the commercials or uh, advertisements from uh, telcos and service providers, none of them are really talking about the modem technology that's coming into the broadband home. Uh, you don't hear about cable or DSL or VDSL. Uh, the focus really is on the consumer connectivity experience in the home and also uh, what the Wi-Fi experience is in the home. Uh, and the service providers know that if uh, the user has an issue, they will not be calling the retail brand on the gateway in the home. They'll be calling the service provider. So they have a vested interest to make sure that they are providing uh, that mesh node solution in the home so there is no need for their broadband subscriber to go out and get a product that's not uh, uh, familiar in their lab environment. So that's one thing they're doing. The other thing they're doing is how do they leverage this Wi-Fi uh, mesh node system in the home to perhaps add additional functionality like IoT devices, video cameras. Uh, one, it's a good experience for the subscriber because they can uh, pre-provision these devices with their Wi-Fi network, but also it's smart business uh, for the uh, service provider because it creates a stickiness with that subscriber, with their whole ecosystem in the home being based on their product line, which reduces churn. Uh, this is both an opportunity and something they care about. And um, can you tell us about any other sort of technologies um, that we should be aware of in this area? Yes, I think uh, with the Wi-Fi mesh nodes, you have valuable real estate in the subscriber's home. Uh, there's more value that you can bring uh, your subscriber. A few of the things that uh, the market is looking at is what if you were to add voice functionality into those mesh nodes? Uh, the consumer doesn't need an extra device uh, to have a voice interactive uh, service. They can use the mesh nodes that are available. So that is one. Uh, the second thing we're taking a look at is, you know, there is a lot of local uh, computational power in this mesh nodes. How do you take advantage of that? Uh, there's technologies like RF profiling and sensing with this Wi-Fi in the home, you can create a good map of uh, that environment. So if a window is open or a door is left unlocked, uh, there is information the RF map has changed. That can be translated into a service for your subscriber by alerting them, hey, check that door or window. 
and it also provides context. We talked about voice being a service, but if with the RF environment you know where that subscriber is, when they say turn on the lights, you can localize that voice assist action to the kitchen if that's where the person is. Great, thank you. Thank you.